All right. You know what? We're going to go ahead and get things started right now. Turtle Gang. Yes, sir. It's long. So what's up, man? Um, for those who, who um, don't know about you, um, can you let us know a little bit about you, your background, um, how long you've been in it, sharing the information? I know um, you put out documentaries. So um, I just step back and let you go. Well, um, a lot, of, a lot of what has evolved into my work, I guess you could say, is um, it's been an ongoing journey for my family. And I'm just the latest in a long line of people to pick up, you know, pick up the, pick up the uh, mantle, you know, carry the, carry the torch. So, you know, I could talk about my Uncle Arnold who, um, uh, you know, he passed away in 1978, but um, at the time of him passing away, he was highly engaged in all types of demonstrations in terms of who the indigenous people of our territory was, our history. Um, he was heavily engaged in politics. Um, he was a he was a lawyer. He was a journalist. Uh, my family owned one of the first what you would what is labeled as African American newspapers. Right, but uh, we owned a newspaper in um, all the eighteen uh, mid eighteen hundreds. We started a newspaper, you know what I mean? and the newspaper was named after um, my great great grandmother, who was a full blood Lenape woman. Uh, her name is Inelio, but it translates to Echo. So the name of the newspaper was called the Echo Press. Um, we still have all of it on microfilm. So I'm just I'm just saying this to let you know that um, this is something that has been a part of our family's tradition, going back to our indigenous uh, our indigenous period. You know, my family is on record. Yeah, so like you didn't just jump on this like two years oh, no. ago, like like most people. Yeah. Well, from Magic Miami. Appreciate it. All right. Okay. Continue. Sorry. Um, Magic to speak on is information that's been gathered and handed down for generations, and not just within our own record, but within town records, you know, compiled from town records, deed, you know, uh, marriage, birth certificates, things of that nature. Um, there's been, there's been uh, multiple books written about my family. See, my family. We are uh, we are on record as being three of the the three oldest families on record in what you call Monmouth County, New Jersey. Now you have to understand that Monmouth County, New Jersey, was the first legal settlement that was not a a an outpost like New Amsterdam was an outpost. What what was before New York was New Amsterdam it was a Dutch outpost, right? Pri prior to what we call Middletown. And in the territory that we now call New Jersey, there were no settlements. The very first settlement was Middletown, New Jersey. Middletown is located on the northern side of the Navasing River. Southern side of the river is Red Bank. That's where my family is from. That's where we've been since they started writing, recording records of who the people are in the area. So, you know, we know where all our burial grounds are. You know things of that nature. We've been we've been putting people in the ground on record since the early 1700s. Like we got, you know, what I mean, we got stones to prove. Like it's it's not no like this is not something I'm saying. I'm asking you to believe me. You now I mean, I could take you to these places. I could show you these things. Put my fingers on them, hands on. So you know, it's not so much about me. How long I've been doing it? It's how long has my family been? doing this and you know we've suffered losses a lot of land been stolen from us acres and acres of what you call the jersey shore which is prime real estate you know we're talking billions of dollars worth of yeah uh, resources you know what i mean and currently to this date my family we still hold we still hold 92 what is called indian deeds wow now people can go into the hit go into a a book they can 
pull up, they can Google something and say, well, an Indian deed is this and this and that. And they can tell you everything they want to say, what a deed is and this and that, but they can't produce it. Yeah. See what I'm saying? Yeah. My family can produce them and the history. So, you know, we, we have too many people that are learning history via history books, which is great, but history book don't record things, you know what I mean, as they always occur. And a lot of times you got to be able to uh, reach back and touch things, you know, pull things out your past. So when I speak on my family history, we have the ability to bring forth our tribal regalia that's been in our family for hundreds of years. You know what I'm saying? We have the ability to take you to places where our elders gathered, you know what I mean? And, and what we would call it, a shock of moxing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, like, it, it's just, you know, I, I hear a lot of information being put out there and I put my life on it that most can't produce tangible information outside of, you know, a book somebody wrote. And what I'm what I'm trying to show people is that if you research your family history, you're gonna find things that ain't been recorded in the general study history book. You know what I mean? You're gonna find things that okay. Islam, can you hear me? Can you see me, bro? Islam. Islam, can you hear me? Can you, can you hear me as well? Yeah, we can hear you. We can see you in here. Islam, okay. All right, hey, everybody. Islam. Peace. Uh, the brother uh, Turtle Gang was gonna go ahead. Continue, brother. Peace, brother. I'm sorry. So, yeah, um, you know, I find myself in a position to, um, you know, kind of normalize the conversations that are going on. And um, you know, this is what we've been doing. Like, I, I can show you when my uncle was, like I say, he's heavy, heavy involved, involved in politics. So, I, we all know that we all, at one time, were the Republicans. And we were the landowners. So it came to the time when the Republicans got integrated, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? More of the Europeans coming in. And that's when we decided to become Democrats. You know what I'm saying? I can show you the initiation of that in my territory via my uncle. You know what I mean? We are all news people. So, you know, we talk about, you know, Rod Lee was talking about, you know. One second, brother. You breaking up. Yeah, you're breaking up. Okay. Yo, if I put in headphones, you, you guys will be able to hear me, right? Yeah. All right. All right. Can you say that again, Turtle Gang? Because uh, you was breaking up. Black headphones? Would that make it better? Those white headphones on there? I don't hear any feedback. It was just, uh, I could hear you up until like 30 seconds ago. So I don't know if you did that. something different. So, um, so, so basically, I, I'm just in a position along with my family, you know, um, we're in a position to kind of put information out there that'll help normalize the conversation and center people more so on the actual family history to start getting back to what's going to tie you back into the actual nations no. that operating your what was going on 100,000 years ago, maybe years ago, way up the sun. I'm more concerned about what was going on the past 400 years. Okay. Hold up, let me. You're breaking up again. Maybe you should put the headphones yeah. in. Yeah. All right. Uh, you can hear me? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. Uh -huh. better. Yeah. Okay, so as I was saying, you know, um, just you know, following in, in the footsteps of my ancestors, you know what I mean. Um, I've, I've been blessed. My family's been blessed. You know, we went through a lot of hardship, but uh, you know, we're still here, and we feel as though it's time for us to more or less, uh, as they would say, come out of hiding. You know, what I mean, a lot of our families went into hiding, went mm -hmm. under different identities. Uh, yeah. If he was, if he was light enough. He was white, you know what I mean? If you if you was you know fit the bill, you was Negro. And um, you know, so we yeah. have family members that, that come up that could be white, that could be Negro, that could be considered Indian or mulatto was the term. So, you know, it's a lot of frag fragmenting in our families. And before we can get anything done on a on a national level, we gotta get things done on a family level. 
heal the wounds within our family and start talking about our history. And, you know, because, you know, our, our, our culture was stripped from us. So what we did as the, the people we are, we started taking from different cultures around the world to build the framework, you know, to, to, to re, to, to, to re, you know, um, realign us with, you know, with our ways, you know what I'm saying? But our actual cultures and languages was taken from us. Mm -hmm. And so when we started to take from other cultures, you know what I mean? We, we had an affinity for these cultures and these languages. You know what I mean? We still do today. And, you know, I try not to be somebody that's going to, um, you know, uh, you know I, I try not to be too negative or whatever, but it, it comes a time where, you know what, all these things have helped us, and now it's time for us to really move back into our home, our real home. You know what I'm saying? And that's what, that's what I'm trying to inspire people to do. Move back into your home, speak your language, tell your history. You know what I mean? We've shared in other people's histories around the world, and it's given us pride, you know what I mean, and who we are, but now it's time to really get back to who we really are, because that's where our power is. So, you know, it's, it's not something that I've started on my, you know, it's something I'm just a part of. I was born into this part of my spirit, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So. Islam. I, I feel, Islam, I feel where you're coming from, brother. Um, my um, my, my uh, great uncle, my granddad's brother, retired Air Force, he's a historian, and traced our family back so long you know that like he got us back on paper you know 200 years so when my grandfather tells us that his dad was a black for indian you know owning mm -hmm. land in tennessee it, it carries some weight for me you know so i, yeah. I hear where you're coming from and um now that the brother sears in here too i want to go ahead and just um repeat this just so that everybody watching understands um basically what we want to do is cover the indigenous paradigm as it pertains to people like us and um we also want to touch on the the moorish aspect or the moorish connection um whether people agree with it or not you know because there's there's a lot of confusion going on around there i mean a lot of people coming up off of memes off of youtube you know we have entire generations now that you know don't even know what it's like to get out there and do research to you know hit the ground and learn things from actually talking to people so people are you know building off of a lot of the work that you two have done which is one reason why you're the guest because you know you've been doing it for a while and i respect both of you and the work that you put out so this isn't you know we're not coming on here to um you know do like some corny battle you know or like you know anything like that we just putting the information out here and that's what it's about so um i'm i'm gonna be impartial and just ask a few questions and yield the floor um Thank you for introducing yourself, Turtle Gang, and now I'll go ahead and um, let us see us speak. Mm -hmm. uh, peace, brother. Peace, yeah. brother. Sir. Peace. So all the peace. listeners, peace, brother Turtle Gang. Um, Islam, to all the human families of Canada. Uh, peace to all the indigenous nations. And by that, I'm not, I'm not just talking about like Susquehanna, Rappahanna, you know, Algonquin. And say, so, uh, like, uh, you know what I mean? Like, nation to gods and earths. Like, you know what I mean? Uh, uh, what we call the NOI. Like, in the, in the auspices of what's been happening, what we have to understand is that anything that we create as Asiatics of the land, you know, is indigenous. Therefore, hip hop, you know what I'm saying? which is like poor man's moral science in the beginning, you know what I mean? Um, whenever there's a wave of something new, there's always an undercurrent of our people, our original people, meaning the Moors as like the, the, the forebearers of that. So like uh, we Moors, we give respect to Marcus Barbie a lot, you know, and that's rightfully so. But remember, after Bobby wound up, and they wound up trying to break up the UNIA, you got to understand, like, where did all of the Bobby guys go? Like, like this is what, when the brother was saying, we got to learn our individual history. Like, this is why a lot of us, I think, are at odds with each other, because we don't understand the through line in history, because we're looking at it from the perspective of a linear path. When history as well as creation is more like a wave, you know? 
that crests and rises and breaks at different points, but it's all still the same way. You know what I mean? So our ancestors, for instance, didn't um didn't separate past, present, and future. You understand what I'm saying? We looked at it like we were in the eternal now. You dig know what I mean? Like we were in an eternal moment of creation that's perpetually within the mind's eye of what is the supreme highest self that we, let's say, call Allah. So in that great wisdom, things happen in succession. But when you don't have the eyes to see, you just think they are random. So I bring that back to people like Marcus Garvey who established the UNIA and got so heavy with it that his own people, who again, some being indigenous, some being foreign, worked with the enemy to shut that down. But then even in the despair of that, a lot of those people were able to go into the modern science temple of America, you see what I'm saying, at the time, because that was the only other real artifice that was actually moving people towards the national agenda. But the way that we were given history, those of us that know, like most of us ain't hear about Nobu Jawali until we became somewhat adults, teenagers to adults, you understand? But we heard about everybody else. Why? Because as the founder, in my opinion, as well as my research, as the basically the first one to say that we was always here and that we was not, that he was also the one that ex made the difference between, like I grew up, they were talking about slave masters, but when you read what he wrote, he was talking about the slave holders. You know what I'm saying? A master and a holder is two different things. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the little things I've been in putting a lot of this stuff together and watching how the movement has now attracted people who, you know, understand that they're here, but then at the same time still want to use the inferior designation as opposed to the designation that's actually left on paper for them to understand. Like, when we talk about Indians and we talk about Blacks and Negro, like, all of those are words of art. And those things were used to denationalize our people based upon us being the Atlanta, the basic title holders. But when we really want to be real about it, all of this started in 1492. So if it all started at the fall of Granada, let's say, the fall of the stronghold at that point. And Granada, at that point, had dominions. Like, you have a Granada over there in Espana. You have a Granada here in South America. You have a Granada in California, right, the Granada Hills. You got a Granada in, uh, there's a town called Granada. Like, there's Granada all over the place. All these Granadas yeah, after foreign them, titles, though. Those are foreign them. titles. They're not Islam. indigenous titles. We did not put those titles on there. So you can't carry the jurisdiction of a foreign land to this exactly. land. That's not exactly like that's, that's not point. but that's so there's point. not no Granada here. See what I'm saying? Well, that's what I'm that's, saying that's, is that the land that's that foreign terminology. I, I'm I'm not saying that it isn't, brother. Are you not letting me finish what I'm saying? What I'm saying is you're right. That is a foreign uh terminology that they describe, but Prior to it being that, the original name of what it was was still in effect. So when they decided that they were going to call it this and try to box us out of that, they still had no legal right to do so. Therefore, that place never stopped being what it was prior to them calling it this. I'm not in dispute of what you're saying, brother. You just got to let me finish what I'm saying. You know what I mean? Like, I'm, I'm not at odds with that. That's very true. But what I'm also saying is that because that is true, we have the right to basically understand that we've never been outside of what has been left for us. We were just misnomered outside of that. And then it was aspects of us who joined on with that, which then gave them a, a, a quasi right based upon these people who converted into their system was still Asiatics, even though they Absolutely. converted. That's why they converted. But the same way they converted, there was really no conversion because they never stopped. They could not convert out of what they initially were. So really yeah. what we're talking about is those that made the choice 
to go against the empire. I'm I'm just saying the terminology. Like you 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 a you a powerful person. People follow you, and when you say there was a Granada here, people take that literal, and they can and they translate that into jurisdiction. Which is and they I talk explain. about. Yeah, I I know I I get that, but what I'm trying to say is to even use that terminology around people is dangerous. I go well, through I it every day. Terminology that people understand in order to get into the deeper root of it. But I don't, I don't, true indeed. But I, but I'm saying, why is the reference foreign? Why is the reference not like why? Why isn't the reference the indigenous because nations? Be, because I started Let's, talking about what happened in 1492. That's what I started talking about. So I had to take it back to the point in which these these colonizers started calling it something different to get uh, let the people understand that regardless to what these people who came later called it, it still had a name prior to that. That's so let's I'm talk about the name prior to that. Let's start there then before we introduce okay, the so name of Granada. I'll, I'll yield the floor to you to do that then, brother. No, no, I, I'm just I'm I'm just I'm just pointing out so issues I. that someone like myself would have. You know what I mean? Because right. see, like I I I, I don't also, speak you say like I followers. Like I don't I don't have followers. Oh, pardon me. I I, I really didn't mean that. I, I didn't I mean that. I don't I, I really assume to be a master teacher or a leader or anything no, no, no. else that people may perceive and that I, based upon me being on that. So I don't I would have, you know, absolutely, I don't and like I, I agree with you. I, I apologize for that because I don't like when people say that to me. You know what I'm saying? It was just in, in the moment. But what I'm saying is the, the the people that watch, the silent viewers, people of that nature that are learning. You know what I'm saying? They they take what is being said and they take it to heart and they convey jurisdiction off just the basic little things that people say. And I hear I this agree. all the time. And my thing is this: like, you know, as much as we like to say we all we this we that. You know what I mean? Within, like, my people, we speak the Algonquin tongue, right? Exactly. So within our Algonquin tongue, every nation has a little different form of Algonquin, right? That's true. And then within my nation, we got three different forms. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Depending on what part of the territory you you, you in is, is going to be reflective of, of which dialect you would want to speak. You know Indeed. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. and, that, and that conveys jurisdiction and everything, right? Indeed. So... What I'm saying is that, that, like, knowing my own indigenous culture, I know that everybody ain't one blanket people, right? So I can't I say that the Indians, like, I don't do that. That's what the European did. Like, if you look at all the treaties, and I'm, I'm just going to speak for my people because I think that's responsible. If you look at the treaties, and my, my people got the first treaty with the United States, right? On our treaty, it says Lenny Lenape. Okay, that's exact. That's not Indian. Indian is a general term. Like, so when we're talking about these treaties and we talk about these agreements, they're not in Indians' names. They're in their exact national title names, their exact type tribal names. So when we want to enforce those, right, these are contracts. They can only be enforced by the signatories. They can't be enforced by people who come under a different name so me as a lenape i can't enforce an apache treaty so it's it's, it's irrelevant for me be, to even speak on it. you know what i mean and i'm finding that I, people are speaking not even connected to it, and it causes confusion this is why i say we need i'm not saying we need to get back to our people to separate because when you understand indigenous cultures like my people we was called the uh the shop of mooring or we was called the novice right those titles were locations so when i would say oh, i'm, I'm novice and this person would say oh they shark river and these are just tra translations we're not saying we different people we saying my specific people live by the novice river his live by the shark river see what i'm saying we're not saying we're different people so even when, when we're talking about tribes and this and that unless you understand the language and what's really going on the perspectives that we have which are foreign because we're born into this world from a foreign perspective because we speak in english we've grown up in this world if, if you're not rooted in these things you're not going to understand them until you actually walk amongst them and are part of it that that is with any culture in the world so a lot of the concepts that our people are dealing with they all foreign they they they, they references are foreign everything start with over there exactly i'm saying we got the problem i'm i'm that's saying we got our own nations we got our own languages 
we got our own languages and our own histories and we need to start here and then when you want to work the other information in to to say okay well boom because like I, I could take you i could take you to europe to library in europe and you can look my people up in the libraries there you know what i'm saying and you're gonna find probably more information over there about over us and you're gonna find here then you're gonna find about here but when i'm saying my people i'm saying lenny lenape and i'm speaking of a specific territory and a specific history see what i'm saying and i just feel like our people we too general and this general stuff is just gonna cause confusion because what it does is makes the next door neighbor think he can come into your house and lay in your bed and he can't you know what i'm saying we can live next door to each other for 30 years you still can't just enter into my home and lay on my bed you know what i mean there's a jurisdiction that must be conveyed or we not civilized so when we start talking about we can do whatever we want no no you can't no you need, you need there's a jurisdiction for every territory and i don't know why people don't recognize the jurisdiction you know what i mean the more teach- i'm talking about moors yeah and i'm talking about them too a lot of them don't understand law because yeah like I, I they've gotten into a lot of them like what i'm also understanding more like i'm not in contravention to anything you're saying so just so you know i'm not in disagreement or disharmony with that what i find in my thing is that i get a bunch of people who have like sharif said brother sharif said who were growing up on it on the youtube on the internet so mm-hmm. they don't really go to libraries they don't really uh order real documents sort of Five documents from Library of Congress, different, you know, uh, museums, things like that, to actually read what these things are saying. And I also find that because of that, there are certain words and certain things that they become used to understanding from the perspective of you're saying that in order to get them to see it from a purely, let's say, indigenous standpoint. You got to get them to understand who they are as individuals, their own estates, their own situation. But they're so, a lot of Moors are so, and when I say Moors, I'm talking about whoever, melanated people. Mm-hmm. Melanated people, I have no problem with that. Uh, uh, they're so secular and secretarian with their, uh, they're like tribal. It's, it's like a town. It's like have some laws that say that say some people that are indigenous but then don't identify with Moors, but then you know at the same time acknowledge different aspects of Moors culture so right now i think everybody is just really striving to find out or accept the fact that they are here or that they have been here and i think our job as individuals uh collective whatever is to help navigate that and anchor it more to what it was prior again to all the confusion because niggas act like we didn't have problems with each other before the european and that's not true you know what i'm saying like you had indigenous people who so-called indigenous peoples who at times were at war with each other and that once yeah, the that's european, the reason for the iroquois thing exactly, uh, exactly. that's what caused the iroquois confederation because there was like if you know who the Iroquois really are really are and, and know the history to understand that I mean it was a lot of infighting going on and I and I just speak for the territory I'm from I don't, I don't like to speak I'm talking about New York New Jersey Pennsylvania area there's a lot of infighting going on amongst the tribes you know what I mean that's not nothing that's not out of the normal Isn't that's, Iroquois- that's just human nature Iroquois is a French word that means uh, black snake. The real name of the tribe, they're called the Mengue. But that's what my people call them, the Mengue. Okay. Right. I mean, what they call themselves, you would ha- I would defer to them. But we call them the Mengue. And you can find them in history, you know, if you, if you look that term up. Okay, I have a question. Um, I want to see if both of you can address it if you, if you want to. But um, all right, I, I would say this. Like, what, what would you make? Okay, and this is directed to, to both of you, both of you. What would you make of the claims um, made by people of European descent, the colonists who came over here and referred to the, the indigenous population as Moors? Like, um, 
by now because of like the internet everybody's seen the ancient and modern britain's quote you know on memes and stuff like that where william penn says how the colonists in uh, new england you know um basically described the native races indifferently as indians moors and um later negroes i mean like i'm not gonna say anything like what 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 would you make me personally that? i don't really regard anything they say from the perspective of a claim you know what i'm saying so mm-hmm. if they write something and talk about how a description it to me with them in terms of reading hundreds of paperwork and, and books and stuff their descriptions were more accurate than the actual claims they made so if you want to see yeah. something in terms of like how they actually got down the most accurate records in any government are going to be the land descriptions the tax records everything else is going to be fugazi so their claims their claims are always false (laughs) you know what i'm saying but the but the descriptions of the land the people the ecology Mm -hmm. the geodetics uh the the uh, topography those things will always be accurate because in order for them mm-hmm. to be able to pop off what they got to pop off they can't say that a mountain was here when it wasn't because then mm-hmm. if they get into something and then be in that place and expect the mountain to be there they're dead so they have to one and then also we have to remember that for a large part of their history here they was regaled to what we call the colonies if they came off of that the people who lived here would kill them you know what I'm saying? That's why they, they tried to do so much to expand it by getting people that were not, that were already here to co-sign them. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like like with the lead subject thing that, that George or whoever did in England in 1677 with the, with the, the was it the Delaware, the Lenape or whatever? We basically tried to say that they was lead subjects and because of that, they gave him right over the actual territory outside the colony I, I, I forget that. and things like that you know what I mean led to a lot of uh, confusion and you know a lot of uh, people switching sides for the good and for the better so mm-hmm. in my opinion just to put a bit in what I'm saying so the brother can answer uh, I don't take any claim they made as fact, legal or, or any way. But any description they made is good for us because that can be used objectively. You see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. More than any claim that they put. Because all the claims was really in, in fraud and against us. But again, yeah. the descriptions are always on point. Are you Absolutely. Okay? Yeah, I, I agree with that answer 100%. I mean, you know, uh, nothing more I can say. But what I can add to that is I said earlier about we got to normalize things, right? Set set a reference point. So you have to understand that we 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 all fully understand that 7-Eleven to 1492, the Moors occupied Europe, right? Raised them. So all their references is gonna start and end with the Moorish Empire. So when they come over here and they see people that are similar in appearance to the Moors. Obviously, they're going to describe them as Moors. They don't speak our language, so they're not going to know what to call us. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to say, these is the Moors. No different than, you know, we call each other my nigga, my nigga. You might right. go someplace, you'd be like, yo, my nigga. And that person be like, I ain't no nigga. Don't say that to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's our terminology. That's that's our safe place. That's our comfort spot. So they was comfortable saying these people look like Moors. They Moors. They were safe. They was comfortable saying these people look like Hebrews. Their traditions are similar. They were safe saying all these things because they the reference points that they have. So when the people are saying, look, in the history book, it says we're Moors. Yeah, that's what they're saying. But we have to sit down and talk to the indigenous people because you can't and respect defined. indigenous. Yeah, and you, you got to let them because we are self-defying people. You know what I'm saying? And when you understand our languages, you understand our languages are very descriptive. So within the language is the truth. You know what I'm saying? Because you can't like, as the brother said, you're not when you record things that's going to benefit your people, you got to record them accurate. You know what I'm saying? So when we deal with our history, like we've recorded our history accurate, and you know, I know this is a little off topic, but in terms of translations, a lot of people think a lot of this information was translated by Europeans. No, <laughs> English was easier to learn than all languages. 
Mm -hmm. we, we were scientists. Many of us spoke our own dialects of our own language. And then if you was a part of an upper part of the of the of the tribal community or, or, the, or the community, you were you would be able to speak other foreign languages, even uh, Arabic for oh, those who exactly. came into contact with people who were doing trade from them regions. Mm -hmm. So the European was barely literate. English is a barely literate language, right? We spoke multiple languages. So a lot of the translations that we get are our people translating our languages into English, right? So these, this is something like, because it all come down to descriptions, but we understand descriptions are not identity. That, that's, we get caught up, they're, they're funk, yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? So we have to stop, we have, we have to stop using descriptions as identities and move forward. But the identities do unify us. Indeed. You know what I mean? Indeed. Because this this accurate yeah. records. I mean, there's records of uh, the Moors, uh, the so-called Moors. See, like when I say more, right, like everything else, I'm speaking of it from the perspective of the inclusive. So when I look at a picture of Selassie, let's say, right? You ever seen that picture of Selassie with the gold crown on? To me, mm -hmm. that's an Ethiopian Moor, you understand? in a gold fest but to a rasta mm -hmm. you understand that's a crown you dig what i'm saying of his king but i'm looking at him as uh, another archetype of the vastness of an empire that we all inherit and that based upon wherever system we as our mortacanos or, or those of us that were already here we represent an aspect of humanity that was for the past 527 years ejected to allow other nationalities in a sense to do their thing based upon whatever karmic cycle or i mean there's a lot of different people who have a lot of different feelings as to why things happen but regards to what happened we are now the result of all of that in which now as the true possessors of the land things are moving towards an octave where we now have to clearly define what it is we are doing as individuals as states as communities as tribes clans whatever we're going to do because the way that things are going the united states as a occupying government which is all it really ever was because technically it forfeited its right to existence so many times <laughs> that, that mm -hmm. it's allowed though but that also allowed us to get to this point you understand what i'm saying like the books that we read in now to come to these conclusions and the things that we've done individually have it was existed before we was here so that means the other elder scholars that came before us and all of that they read the same information and whatever whatever but for whatever reason they chose not you see what i'm saying to let it out to the point where we could clearly delineate ourselves and clearly define our path as a distinct identity was a distinctive identity american excuse me uh from the soil from this hemisphere so everything has been about trying to get us to abandon the estates again and go across somewhere else and adopt a foreign identity meanwhile for instance we put a bow in it the chick who just won the, the French Open, the thing with Serena and all that. I just did the knowledge for this. She was born in, like, she was, her mother was Japanese, but the father's household was Haitian. You know what I'm saying? He ran a Haitian household. And that was cool. It was Haitian. She was Haitian of Japanese descent until she won. Once she won, she became Japanese. See what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Why? Because nationality-wise, the public perception is Japan is at a higher echelon than Haiti. You dig what I'm saying? But it was the Haitian nationality that actually infused the so-called Japanese, right? To mm -hmm. put her in that position. Because you can yeah. never, I don't care what you do, a recessive can never dominate a dominant gene. And obviously, his genes were dominant <laughs> in the incension of this person. To the point, today, more. I'm at the park with my son. I seen like five, six white families with their daughters <laughs> at the tennis court. 
going in. Like, real talk. Like, like I'm seeing how everything is moving towards our original archetype being the, in, this, in the supremacy seat again. And everybody else that's not down with that having to now subset, substantiate their existence here, which, again, is going to that 2020 census thing we was talking about before. This time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, definitely. We want to hit on that with the 2020 census. I mean, um, how, how do you feel about it? Um, for people that don't know, um, 2020 census will ask black people about their exact origins, black and white people. And um, mm-hmm. I mean, like, you know, it's crazy, especially for this to be happening right now. You know, we know nothing's happening by accident. So, um, well, well. You have to understand that that whole movement right now is being initiated by Fauna. You know what I mean? And um, they've done a lot of work, you know what I mean, behind the scenes for a long time making this stuff happen. You know what I mean? I, I was I was I was at the actual meeting with the uh with the um with the with the United States Census Bureau, you know, it was in Manhattan like two months ago. And um they've they've been developing a relationship with them for a long time. And they are actually the, the Narragansett tribe is actually the template that uh, they're using to move forward. So, you know, th- th- this is something that, like I said, a lot of our people don't understand that governments move quietly. Like you may not know that there's governments on the land, but they're not out here on YouTube. Now, my government, we the Sand Hill Band Lenape Cherokee, right? We have the longest uninterrupted government since the arrival of the colonists, meaning my government has never ceased to exist on this land. You understand? Have we fallen at a wayside? Have things, you know, not, uh, uh, you know, how, are we not doing things the way we need to be? Yeah, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? But our government still stands. You, you know what I'm saying? We, yeah, we never dissolved it. The right, like for the past 30 years, we've been in a, in a situation with New Jersey because we are actually the oldest indigenous nation in New Jersey. And the other three, uh Lenape families or nations that are in the state they actually came into here in, and then in the 1970s so based on our traditions they don't have jurisdiction jurisdiction is conveyed to us we grandfather right but the issue is the issue is we the people of the land and we highly connected these other tribes migrated here so when you highly connected and you the keepers of the land and you got people in these grounds you not like you don't you're going to deal with things differently. So there was something called the Tennessee Pipeline, which is still an issue now, similar to uh, Standing Rock, right? Yeah. Tennessee Pipeline w- wanted to bring the pipeline through New Jersey, bring it out to like Perth Amboy area, ship frack gra- gas over to Asia. So what people don't understand that is in any civilized government, you don't see this, but all the corporate governments have to go to the indigenous nations. Mm-hmm. Right. You know what I'm saying? They have to sit with them. This happens in Africa. It happens everywhere. They'll, they'll call they'll call those people that don't agree with them in Africa warlords. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? But yes. but w- when they agree with them, they, yeah. they they tribal leaders. Yeah. But when they don't, they pirates and warlords. So this is not seen to the general public, right? So they came to my tribe and said, "We want to build this pipeline." My tribe said, "You're not disturbing none of these lands," right? So they in, so from that point on, they started writing my tribe out of history and elevating these other tribes into position to where they can cast they can vote to do this. You know what I'm saying? So it causes turmoil amongst the tribes, you know what I mean? But at the same time, like when you compassion and understand perspective, you can see why the other tribes wanted to do it because it was gonna bring work into their area. They suffering. You know what I mean? Like they need help. You know what I mean? So it's it's a difficult thing, but it's a lot of things going on that the general public don't know nothing about because they're not looking in that direction. And this is what I mean when I say we got to start looking at ours because there's stuff going on right in our territories that affect us directly. And we not even focused on it. And it's like, yo, we need to rally behind the indigenous governments that are in place, bring the knowledge that we have and offer it to them. Right. And then what they're going to do is they're going to give you a hand up because there's places that are they're like there's nations that are recognized. And I ain't talking about federally recognized to where the government controlled them. No, I'm talking about state recognized yeah. tribes. And the reason why the state is forced to recognize them because the state has treaties with these tribes that predate the state even existing. 
See what I'm saying? So we don't need recognition from the federal government. The federal government is made nope. up of the union of states. So if the states recognize you, you know, that just means you're not going to get federal money, but you don't want federal money. Mm -hmm. you once you get federal money, money it's a wrap. Yeah, yeah, you want what's due to you. You want what's due to you based on your agreements and your treaties with your with your forefathers that your forefathers made. And those treaties, those treaties and agreements are made in your in your national names. So when 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 the prophet says you got to nationalize, he's absolutely right. But you got to take, take it a step further than where people are resting, because you'd have to produce treaties. Right. In any of these general titles. And you can't find treaties like Indians and such and such. It's going to be such and such specific and then Indians. But that's just a general term. You got to find the specifics of enforcement. And I'm not talking about federal laws because you can go into a federal court and fight the law using the law. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about having a jurisdiction above federal law mm -hmm. where, they, where they come to us. Right. And that's not going to happen until we stand up and be our exact selves. And that doesn't mean we can't support the Moorish paradigm and the platform because as I was educating a platform to organize our people. And Noble Drawley demonstrated that in Chicago by getting people elected to councilmen and, and things of that nature. You know what I mean? And these are the things we need to be doing because we need to be taking over the federal government as it deals with us. But at the same time, we need to be handling our, our business affairs in our own governments. You know what I mean? We, we have the right to be dual citizens in our national government and participate in this United States government and do commerce and that's what we need to start doing like we need to start participating but under our own national titles and doing equal trade with these people and enforcing our rights but we're not going we need to be able to do that under our, our righteous and natural our national names so this is where i agree with the moors on in a lot of aspects of what they teach and i just feel like we have to take it a step further you know what i mean okay that makes sense Looks like we lost a seer, but yeah, now nah, everything you're saying makes sense. Um, should I agree with you too? Um, so you're saying, I mean, like, uh, one thing I was saying, like, with the census, man, are you saying that that this is something that the tribe I forgot the name you said kind of force they've you know, been to happen or push for? It's not, it's not forced, they just brought the information to the attention of the U.S. census, and you got to understand that times have changed, right? And the people that are in positions of authority aren't always your enemy. Sometimes they just don't know these things. Peace. Peace. Hello? Peace. Can you hear me? We hear you. Yeah. Okay. So, so sometimes these people that, that have been what we deem enemies at this point in time, like as the generations move on, people are just going through the motions. They don't even know the history of it. So when we were sitting up there with the, and I, I filmed the whole thing, you know me, I filmed it all. So I got the whole meeting with the Census Bureau on, on film. And when we asked those people and we, we, we presented them with situations where they where it's obvious that they alter our identities and we asked them, why was this done? And they're like, you know, we can't even really tell you like they don't know because it's it's removed from their time. And they, they're not they're not the same wicked devils that was doing this. They just don't know any better to bring forth change. So when you approach them in a manner that says, look, this is not who we are, and you show them, they have no, all they can do is say, listen, okay, this is what we're going to do. And this is how this came about. You know what I mean? And the science is that, you know, it's just a start. It's, it's a way of getting back on record. And once you deal with 50 more people that make a claim to be something and they have a common right. ancestry, they will start viewing you as who you say you are. You know what I mean? So as long as 50 of my family members all say we stand hill band, the Nape, Navasink, you know what I mean? And we all write that in. As long as 50 of us identify as that, that's it. The United States government has to start identifying us that as that on some levels. And that's where the process begins. We we in something that's gonna take seven generations to get back. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you right now. Yeah. My 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 grandfather, that's the first on record, right? In, the, in these colonizers records right his name is abraham rock but that's a that's a that's a completely biblical name if you understand that and you understand the the you know the uh uh the symbolism of the name abraham and rock right that's what they called my grandfather because he was the father of a nation right 
So I'm the seventh generation grandson of him. See what I'm saying? By this time, this information was supposed to be eradicated. We're not supposed to know none of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But we're here teaching this stuff. So they already lost. Right now, it was just going to take another seven generations to get back into it. And in seven generations, if we continue with, on the path we're on now, our children will be being raised as a nation in tune with the information we're dealing with, not just as pockets within a nation, right. whole nations. Inshallah. So it's about being patient, but we got, we got to start the process now. The process has been started multiple times and it gets interrupted. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that was before the event of what we call social media and the ability for for, for the for the, the head to to split, you know what I mean? Like chop one off, boom, another one pop up. Like they can't, they yeah. can't, they can't do that to us now. They can't knock one person off and the movement ends. It's too many yeah. now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Indeed. Exactly. All right. And so you know my thing Please, like you no know, i see I, I don't know if you remember first to the adolescence um i approached you i see you had a, i saw you had a turtle in your in your um in your hair oh damn oh, damn how long ago was that hey. all right it's long wow Yeah, man. Uh, growing up, my peoples was, uh, or are, based on my grandfather, they were Labrees, and the Labrees uh, were in Louisiana, in a place called Montville County. And uh, I traced it back to his father. And, you know, there was so many that marriage between Anna, uh, Anna Maria and, and Luis created such a thing in terms of like the expansion, I think, of how many different people could now come over here and become or marry into indigenous families, you know what I mean? And then assume the identities that it created, I think, all of the, like, as, going through not knowing who we are, all of these ages, I'm starting to look at it now as a means of being able to procure almost the best of all of that. Because nowadays when I see people from so-called foreign lands or whatever, and I'm in habit, they, like in a lot of their lands, our archetype now, like how we appear now when we be in habit or just like our picture like over in their countries like they got statues of us that look just like that and these people done grown up seeing that so when they coming back over here now seeing us in a sense repatriating back to that identity with a point where we're physically manifesting that that alone is creating such a charge that they have to put all of this different odds indians against moors and the aboriginal autonomous like using all of these words that don't really describe what nation you actually come from like they still needed people to be at odds with each other to keep that and i think that while that's happening the things that you're doing privately the things that i'm doing privately the things that we commiserate or work together to make these things happen that's where the work is going to come to fruition because like you said i don't see it happening in my generation i know that's not yeah. gonna happen so because out of our generation of people we came up with how many people are even on it like that i don't mean like people we came into it once we was conscious i mean those of us who always had this burning desire to be free that a lot of us have not cultivated yeah. and have allowed to become exploited by you know what i'm saying so it's one thing when you actually are talking about it, but then when you actually working and you are establishing, like you said, indigenous and a, a truly indigenous government that really, like I'm saying, never stopped. That's the irony. I had a more talk to me about how he was taking him to court to, to denounce his U.S. citizenship and all that. And I was like, but brother, according to today's document, you never was a citizen to begin with. 
So how could you denounce something that technically you never was? (laughs) Just like how can you try to go back to something that you never really was out of? We just, as they say in the Latin, went into interregnum, which was a, a time of recess. And that time is up. Yeah, I'm seeing everything change to the point uh, Trump and them put out this thing, said anybody from the International Criminal Court try to arrest them, they're going to arrest them. <laughs> you know what that means? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. You understand? That's the, the, the International Criminal Court in their arena. That's like, that's the dudes that put out the, the thing on Ratzinger where, where Francis had to take over the Pope shit. Mm-hmm. So for him to put it out like that, that's like a, a declaration of war to the international judicial system. People mm-hmm. think this is like some regular steeds. Like, nah, this is they 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 are ice. Then they came out of the Human Rights Council. You understand? Yeah. Because the Israel connection again, which is really Lord Balfour and them from uh, Britain. That's them trying to again extend the control of that. Then I read something where the EU was talking about merging with the African Union. You heard about that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> All of this is them trying to treaty up with each other in this de facto system, while those of us with the true Elodio titles now are consolidating. It's a direct response if you have the eyes to see it. You know what I'm saying? But most of our people so caught up in the internet, you know, uh, weaponizing of information. That we no. lost lost sight of that, I think. But yeah, man. Right. Don't your don't your people have a the diagram on how to read the turtle shell more? Well, the turtle shell is the um it's the time cycle. It's long. Well, I'm saying you you have your people taught the way of how to read that. Am I correct um, or mistaken? See, this is the thing. Like, um, it's a tradition amongst our language group, not necessarily the like a language group of people and the actual stock of the people, the actual people. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's in a tradition amongst Algonquins, the Algonquin speakers. You know what I mean? Islam. So, not necessarily, like, not necessarily my people originated it, but because this well, is. We par- participate well, in this your language. language group participate yeah. in that oral tradition of teaching that. Yeah, that that's a part of our oral tra- did, traditions. Yeah. yeah, and um, what what's you know, what's dope about like I said, it's the time cycle, it's the woman's menstrual cycle, it's the platform for government, it's a whole lot of things within the turtle shell. You know what I mean? And the science of the turtle that that's is fine. um, you know, it, it will be liberating to our people. You know, what I mean, turtle is is. On land and in the water, you know what I mean? It's highly adaptable. You know what I mean? It's just, it's just a whole lot of things. You start dealing with the science of the turtle. So, yeah, you know, that, that's that's our main totem, you know what I mean? In ter- and especially in terms of government. But, um, yeah, you know, it's, it's a calendar. It's all types of things on the on the back of the turtle, you know? The world is on the back of the turtle. Yeah, ours is the B. I was down here. Hmm? I said our totem is the B. From being the B. Okay. Down here, B is very, very significant. Yeah, yeah. Years. But um, let me ask you this more. Do you feel like? Well, I'll ask to the floor. Do y'all feel like there's like a concerted effort to to purposely create this? I mean, we know it is, but I mean, like a specific effort to blur the lines or keep the understanding of how the so-called Moorish lineage and the so-called uh, uh, First Peoples lineage that was here who at times historically intermarried. Uh, you think that that mm-hmm. is being purposely obfuscated? Because I put in a petition to uh, get some documents from Spain specifically on that. And I mm-hmm. found that they was two types of treaties that they were dealing with. One were one type was called the secular treaties, and that were the treaties that were governed between the so-called Moors, who had family relations with the indigenous people that they referred to as Indians that were on the land here. Mm-hmm. And then at the fall, Spain stepped in as the third party. You see what I'm saying? To then 
uh, seal those treaties and then create the new fake joints based upon them saying that because they fell over here and the y'all was related to them, we now have the right to do such and such over here. So okay, I'm um, see how they write back. My question, though, is yeah. do you think that there's a specific thing to block the understanding of that right now mm -hmm. amongst yeah. our own people? Yeah, absolutely. Um, what you're speaking on is um, when, see, you know, it's a lot of history that our people think they know or have some idea of because a lot of this stuff we're, we're taught it in a real spooky way. And I'm just being real with it, yo. A lot, of, a lot of things we're taught to kind of, they teach us don't take it on face value, but a lot of things, man, we forced to take on face value, right? But there's, there's, there is a relationship between the indigenous, the Americus nations, yep. Yep. right, and the Moorish nations that is absolutely hidden. And if this relationship wasn't hidden, a lot of the fraudulent claims that are made by different Moorish groups would not be made. Now, Thank you. what I'm speaking on is there are six ancient treaties. Now, this science has been hijacked by Europeans just like any other science. Now, I mean, so you can find this science online, but it's going to come from a perspective of Europeans who have rewritten it. Now, I mean, mm -hmm. but there's six indigenous treaties that create international law. Right. Mm -hmm. One of those treaties covers Moors and Hebrews. Mm -hmm. and that treaty allows the Moors and the Hebrews to come to the Americas. Mm -hmm. That that treaty is that treaty loosely is called. It's called the Seal of Solomon Treaty. And it's why you will see certain Indian nations with the Seal of Solomon in their regalia. Yep. This treat this treaty sits in New Mexico. The one of the capitals, like when Noble Draw Lee says we had dominion or, or, or empire stretched across, it's yep. because he they had what we would link to the Moorish Empire or an off or, or a division of Moors did have a treaty and i can tell you who the treaty was signed who signed the treaty right they did have a treaty with the pueblo indians yep. which allowed them to come there yep. so your empire does exist here but it doesn't have jurisdiction over the complete land it's, it's right. more of an embassy yeah. right it's a, so it's a it's so, a it's a it's like a an outpost you have a state and right but you uh -huh. have a state government yeah. and a federal government they exactly like the international trade and all that going back to the Phoenician time. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, Africa, yeah, exactly. Phoenicians, exactly. Yep. And with yes. the so, and Han Han Obey and all that. Yeah, I and mean, that's why you find all these different writings and stuff over here in the Americas. It's not because this is Israel or Palestine, it's because those people are maritime trade nations and they came here mm -hmm. and they sailed up the Mississippi all the way up into Canada, up into yes. the Illinois areas. You know what I'm saying? Which is see, Illinois was important because that's where our um that's where our um our, our like uh let me see like, like that's where a lot of the wood and all the timbers and things came from, and it was also um a a, a trade post for the northern nations, the Canadian nations. Mm -hmm. So you could sail right up the middle of the country out of the Canada. land. Yeah, you go from the Atlantic all the way up to Canada via the Mississippi and the and the tributaries or the rivers that come off of that. So that was yeah. our major trade highway. So all these things are taking place and they're being recorded by the indigenous nations in their indigenous languages. And this is why we was forced to not speak them. You know what I mean? So once we start getting back into this, we can walk into these places, yeah. right? When you go into a museum and you see an artifact from another nation, that's there because it's a part of a treaty. Mm -hmm. It ain't like we we say, oh, they stole that from someplace. No, that's an agreement between those nations. Mm -hmm. So when you start dealing with religious artifacts and things, this is why this is why Columbus came here with a religious artifact, because what they don't a lot of people don't speak about is in 1491, uh, mm -hmm. the last Moorish caliphate to, to hold reign sold his kingdom for $17 right. million. Dollars. Yeah, that's a guy. He, he, yep, you got it. He sold the kingdom. He, he and when he did that, bread, when he did keys. that, yep, Spain. See what happened was the 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 Europeans that had been in been in Andalus, been been in Iberia for a thousand, a thousand years. Mm -hmm. when, when when Rome was there, you know what I'm saying. When mm -hmm. when Rome pulled out, those Europeans stayed. 
and they still own vast estates. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? They still own land. They still control shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Know what I mean? So when they got overthrown, when they government got overthrown by the Moors coming back in, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Them people were still there. Eventually, yeah. those people put their money together and they bought the land from the Moors, from, right. from the Moors who had the dominion kingdom. over it. That was El the kingdom. Zodom. Right. At that so point, the they now were responsible for all the treaties that that land represented. And what people don't understand is that the Iberian population and the North American population are family. Right. We related. That's right. We've been traveling back and forth across. See, this is another thing. Like, if you follow a large, if you follow a large um, group of sea turtles, they'll take you straight over to Europe. That's right. Straight over to the British Isles. And you can follow them on canoes because they so big they create a uh so you don't need no big boat you can do it in canoes just stay with the turtles they showed you that in <laughs> they showed you that in finding nemo man <laughs> yeah there you go so we have been traveling back and forth between what we call the british isles forever right and here in north america forever exactly that's what that's where nova scotia come from nova scotia is new it's scotland on. and they the ones that invented right? hockey right <clears throat> yep well, yeah, yeah, they all that come from up there, and this is why you have certain scripts that can be related to what was going on and what we would call Kemet and stuff like that. It's related. Right. It's not the same. It's it's, it's related. Mm -hmm. you know the what same I mean? way, but if this I is live, because not to cut your wisdom more. The same way, if I mm -hmm. live, just so the people can understand it on a modern context. Same way, if me and you was cousins, right? Our mothers, mm -hmm. let's say, are sisters, right? Our fathers different. You live. Where you live right now, let's say in Jersey. I live down here in Florida. But only thing is, Jersey's mm -hmm. now the kingdom. Florida's a kingdom or a dominion. Mm -hmm. You dig? And then in that, yeah. the same way I will go up north uh, in the summer, <laughs> you know what I mean? Or when school was out, the same way I would go up to that dominion, that kingdom, and then build with the moors there. And then vice versa, in the wintertime, you would send the youth down here. And then in mm -hmm. that, this is how we was able to keep the peace and keep the familial ties, but have everybody maintain their own jurisdictional thing. That's why I yep, said people absolutely. understand your name, they our names, the names we born with. Yeah, they English or this, this and that, but essentially, these are not European can come and necessarily give you these names. These mm -hmm. were things that was passed down to us that represented yeah. the so-called tribe yeah. that these people married into. Exactly. Yeah, which had a tribal connection. So if I was John Smith of the Moorish clan Bay, I was, let's say, Smith of the Taratagi or mm -hmm. the whatever Cherokees of the Moorish clan of Bay. So this allowed me now to international travel through the international stuff that these Moors is dealing with because the dominion here is so explender. We would never leave. That's why everybody always came here. They still come mm -hmm. in here. They got their own country, yeah. Mm -hmm. But they still come in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. So it's and the that's, same that's the same thing. Yeah. Go ahead, Mo. I'm yeah, sorry. like we definitely are. We, we definitely are interrelated. You know, what I mean, we've mixed in. Like I, 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 I go through this all the time with the on, on the topic of the of the what people say the Delaware Moors, yes. right? And, and they say the Nanty Coke Lenape are Delaware Moors, mm -hmm. but you have to understand that. The, the, the whole science or story behind this is, and there's multiple stories. Of you know course. what I mean? There's accurate Depending ones on and there's. Depending on you came from. Yeah, well, I, I'm just speaking, no, I'm just, well, I'm just speaking in terms of the Nanty Coke Lenape, because yes. those are the people who have been identified as the Delaware Moors. Right. So, what happened in the 1700s, uh, some Spaniards, right, who are called Moors at the time, people right. from Spain are called Moors. Right. Their shit wrecked on the coast of the Delaware of Delaware right right those shipwrecked Spaniard Moors married into the Nanticoke Lenape right and they formed a group of families that were Nanticoke and Moor Moorish right. Right? right those are the Moors that live in Delaware right that is different than the Lenny Lenape who are called the Delaware you see what I'm saying? Called that before these guys were came even arrived. Exactly. Right. 
Exactly. So that so the Lenny Lenape are not the Delaware Moors, but Delaware Moors are a division of the Lenny Lenape. But they have no yes, they but they have no jurisdictional uh 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 you know what I mean? Like they're, authority they're not over the, over the nation. They don't have any authority. Yeah, they're just their authority comes through the Nanty Code. Right. Now, be, because their traditions, they were so unique of a people, they developed their own community. So down right. there, you had you had a community for people of color, for Moors, and for Indians. Yeah. And they're all family. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All family. But yep. they got three different schools. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because People are unique and people stick to their traditions. So at this current time, there is a community in Kent County, uh, Delaware, mm -hmm. of Moors, real right. Moors with mm -hmm. tradition and history that go back and their Nanty Coat. It's 300 of them, though. That's not a whole nation. No. But what, what, what Moors will do is they'll learn about the Delaware Moors. They'll half read the information mm -hmm. and then they'll run with it. Now, on top of that, I had the opportunity to sit with the historian and the chief of the Nanticoke Moors. And I asked them the question. And he, he answered the question very thoroughly. I got it all on film because that's what I do. I will share it with the people when the time is right. But he, he fully explained that Moore was just, first of all, the way we look at the term Moore now is not how people looked at the term Moore back then. Thank it wasn't as like... We we have defined it in such a manner that it misrepresents back then. You know what I'm Thank saying? So you. they understood it had a different connotation. It, it, was, it, was, it was a connotative, yeah, as opposed to denotative. Right now, we're like, it means this. Uh, no, exactly. it, it was fluent. It meant many things at many times. So people understood this. So when he explains to me why they called us Moors, oh, they called us Moors because the town that they settled close to us, they called Moors Town. But not because it was Moore's living there, because the person that founded the town, his last name was Moore. Was a Moore. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Now, he might have been a tawny, light-skinned Moore or whatever, right. but it wasn't because the Moors found it. If his last name was right. Brown, they'd have called it Brown Town. Right. It just so happens his name was Moore. Right. Because of the history that we know of the Moors. Because right. the Europeans can't get around their Moorish history. No. You know what I'm saying? And they brought that history here and it intermarried with ours. But we have to be specific when we talk about these interrelationships because well, we're not. And which we just, tribe we just, specifically they went in. Yeah, which tribes so specifically. Way. Just like with the Hebrews. We got to be, which tribes did they specifically uh, intermix with? Oh, yeah, God. so these are the conversations that need to be had. And then we can iron out all of this stuff. Because, I, yo, I love Moors. I studied with Moors. I was saying earlier, I said, when I first... You know, I'm from Jersey, so you know, obviously, very familiar with New York. For my people, it's all it's all one territory. That's the first yeah, it's all one. Yeah, you know that. Mm -hmm. So it's all one territory, and that temple was in the same town that our um headquarters was in. You know what yeah. I mean? All this, all this concurrent. Matter of fact, it was down the street. Our our our, our temple was in East Orange. I mean, our 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 office was in East Orange. The temple was in Newark. So when you know the area, that's the same yes, area. Sir. So, yeah. So, when I first started, you know, coming across the information, I'm online. I'm seeing people building. I'm like, oh, okay. And I'm I'm hearing niggas building. I'm like, all right, I got I got something I can add on to this. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I, like, I see niggas is in Harlem. Niggas is in Brooklyn. Yeah. yeah I'm like, well, you shit. Know. Like, you know what it is. Like, this is, is. like you know, <laughs> this is Kenosi. This is Muscuta. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. this is my people's tribal land. I need to add on uh, to these builds. Exactly. So I came up. I relocated to come jump in the water to mm -hmm. you know what I mean to add on and that was right around the time you was leaving so we had that's met right. that's right I see you had you had a, a a turtle in your in your dread so I'm like that's oh right. yeah I gotta holler at this brother you was the only the one brothers of all the people I could I could identify with you was the, when I told you I was turtle you knew exactly who I was when I told you I'm turtle clan oh, yes oh, when yes, I told so. the rest of these people who I was they had no idea what turtle clan was let alone what Turtle Island was. That was a new science to these people 10 years ago. And I'm just right, being 100 Right with it. when I met you at that time, I, me, I had just come back from the Shinnecock. Yeah. And yep. uh, I that's, had that's my striving people. to show, exactly, striving to show the, the, and the next day was like Labor Day or something. So I was able to mm -hmm. get all of that and show the juxtaposition of how the same thing we're doing at the power, the same thing they're doing at Labor Day, all of that's yep. the more is boom. Then I saw you. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you had the uh, 
it, it escapes me to think, but it was a turtle. And then you was like, mm -hmm. yo, you know, I was like, yeah, the turtle. I had the necklace, yeah. You had the necklace, that's right, Maul. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, that's that's dope, Maul. A lot of these Maws don't know that they actually from here. They mm -hmm. think they was, it's, they was, that they was Muslims first. And you was like, nah, Maul. And you told me, you was like, nah, I'm going to show them. I was like, do that, more. Mm -hmm. And here we are. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, it took, it took a moment, and, you know, you know, a, a lot of a lot of people Honestly, take it like I'm um, like I'm anti more and I'm not. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, I'm one of the few people I've done multiple documentaries on the Moors. I studied under under Temple Moors. I studied under Independent Moors. You know what I mean? My uncle was I don't, I don't know if you're familiar with Nature L. Bay out of Asbury. Yes, sir. But, yes, sir um, Asbury. My uncle. Yeah. My uncle was instrumental in getting his whole getting that. Temp my uncle was the, was the nigga getting drugged through the streets for I years. I that. Setting a setting setting the tone for what they was able to do out there, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I came up in the '80s. My uncle also, uh, his teacher was Sun Ra. So anybody that know it anything is, about um, Sun Ra, and that's exactly where I grew right around the corner from where his community was in um Brooklyn, in Philly, right on Kingston, oh, Brooklyn. Avenue. Okay, nah, the one in, in okay. Kingston Avenue when he was staying over there. Okay, the yeah, yeah, he used to stay different places. So yeah, you know, they used to have study classes in my uncle's basement. My uncle's home, which is the home I pretty much grew up in, it was a temple. It had an eight-foot scare beetle on the outside. You know what I mean? We had we had comedic uh, artwork all throughout the house, Native American artwork, you know what I mean, all That's throughout right. the house. It was, it was a temple because my uncle was on the Moorish degree. So when I tell people I'm not new to Moorish science. I grew up bearing witness to this. And Fudishi and all these people that is in the city now, the elders... <laughs> I, re yeah. I remember them when I was a child. I, I got books from MVBC when I was a kid. You know what I mean? I could show wow. them to you from 92 wow. with his signature on it. So I'm not new to none of this. We just, uh, like I said before, my family is a family that we went underground. Like right now, my family, they worry about my safety because I'm putting this information out. But I'm like, we, we've been hiding for long enough. And it's too many people out here. Like they, 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 they using yeah, our wow. history to misrepresent this truth and I, yeah we, we can't if we sit by and allow it we just as complicit and we're not yeah, helping the you're people doing, you're doing what you're supposed to do more because you're doing what absolutely like, i got to a point in my studies more where it was like okay i'm i'm done with i got tired of referencing the dead and it was like okay if this is going to be about the living then how does this equate if my ancestors were if i am what my ancestors were then today with no uh break in lineage you know what I'm saying? An understanding of that, then I am should be able to apply what they had as an estate to my life now. And in mm -hmm. doing that, I found that once my personal family estate, once I did my family tree and found out what tribes on my mother's side and then on my father's side, as far back as I could get it, where that intersected with the so called Moorish Empire, and then me marrying a descendant like my queen. Her last name was Cordoba. Her father's name was Cordoba. Her mm. father's father's name was Cordoba. He's going okay. back. We can trace that back to how come the first over there. But after See, now that's in, that's that's important. Ahead. See, I, yeah, not to interrupt you, but this is what I'm talking about. Like you really can trace yourself to those people, and that's right. important. You know what I mean? And that's like right. I honor that. I respect that. You know what I mean? Islam, but that's not me. Islam. Like that's me meeting yeah. this woman. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but it's marriage. Telling me one day. Right, but what I'm saying is in the in the aspect of it being like bigger than us and us realizing that the only way this is actually going to function now is if we now turn this into establishing good government. That's why I see a lot of the protection that you have now. You're, you're taking it to the next level. You dig what I'm saying? It's like a lot of these dudes is out here representing little organizations, little groups, whatever. But when you talk about establishing now an actual government, in which people are conscribed with their own constitution to abide by a certain thing in conjunction with others that can now treat and actually do things for and by themselves with the ability to make agreement and deny agreement. Now, the protection that you have amassed around yourself on a spiritual level is now equivalent to what you have on the, the basic level. Because if they was going to stop us from doing what we doing they'd have done it when we was in the street they'd have done it mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying like they they had mad times to do it so at this point i feel like we have 
as many people working against us, we have the more people praying for us that this thing happens because it's mm -hmm. a manifestation of what we have because we didn't set out to do this. I didn't set out to be nah, you're right. in the temple. I didn't set out to be uh, anointed to a position in the actual government. I didn't set out to do none of that. This is something that if I didn't was presented just like with you, it was presented based upon what you had amassed and you chose to take the position to see it through. A lot of our brothers and sisters don't understand that there's a certain character that's built in saying no to certain things. And because our people have been so Europeanized in how they understand things, they don't even understand the basic aspect of being able to stand for something and stick to that. So the amount of time that you have or I have or we have given to this enterprise represents also the amount of years that adds on to the protection for that enterprise. So, so long as we don't compromise ourselves or you don't compromise yourself individually, mm -hmm. you're good. Because, yeah. they, because there's people on the international floor right now that have protection orders for you. This is the other thing I'm finding out. In mm. establishing government, you get to be in to get certain communiques from aspects of agencies and they'll send you things. And I've been, I got something that show, basically said that a lot of the people that are doing the things how you're doing it are already on an international Interpol, do not detain, whatever, whatever. But what it is, mm. is there's so many state governments are, in, are out of subordination because of the fact that they're getting to the point where they can't operate in this bankruptcy no more. Mm -hmm. they are basically just pushing pushing it to the limit like whatever i'm gonna get in trouble so let me do as much as i can now to whatever so we got to get in the position now when it do switch well all y'all people are this this and that okay well they're this government and this government what's your name this is when our delegates go now and start to reclaim the people and those mm -hmm. of us that <laughs> and then those of them that because we're the only ones that worked on having a government in contingency <laughs> mm -hmm. of this happening you did because no lebron no. james school ain't gonna help you <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> that, that ain't gonna help unicef ain't gonna help these these other so called mm -hmm. things that got set up for people your habitat for humanity they ain't gonna help they that's all fema back <laughs> all, all of that is for stateless people all of that is for non-discernible descendable people mm -hmm. so again brother honest to you for doing what you got to do with that because I know that it's also very lonely. Dick, even when you with me. Absolutely. Because cause it's, it, it's a lot, man. It's a yeah. Lot. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I, I, I was built for this, you know what I mean? I, I was groomed for this all my life, so, you know what I mean? But, um, yeah, absolutely, you know what I mean? Um, I would definitely like to, you know, continue with build with you. Like, there's some man. things we need to build on that ain't going to be, ain't going to be, uh, dealt with in one sitting mm -hmm. and i think the public would be very beneficial of it because as i said before people think i'm I'm like some anti more and i'm this and that nah i respect the moors i respect moors history respect it enough to spend thousands of hours researching it you know what i'm saying and and, and, do, and then producing documentaries and things to show and prove for it you know That's what i mean not. and i just feel as though it's a, it's a lot of schisms that got attached to what noble Drali was teaching yeah, and um, and then flipped you know, it for their own benefit, and, and through it for the their initial own benefit. international indigenous aspect of it, put that to sleep. Mm -hmm. Let's turn it into a church. Mm -hmm. Let's all take that yeah. forty thousand dollars. Yeah, let's all set up yeah. our own individual orders, and then let's yep. all get those orders back once we become five hundred one c threes through people like H L Hunt and Andrew Saperstein and the rest of these. A yeah. Philip Randolph, from, you know what I'm saying? Or yeah. it, you know what it is. So in that, but these are the same five come from the same so-called five dollar Indian families that sold their birthright mm -hmm. to be able to be bourgeoisie Negroes in this new society and then deny that aspect of their culture. You dig mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's Absolutely. like the same people we was dealing with at the fall of it is the same people that's gonna be dealing with in the rise of this. So I feel like mm -hmm. Again, brother, anything, I'm not anti anybody. I'm I'm pro more, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. in its original context, put within the tribal and the clan 
unified, which represents the divine and the national movement together. When you're trying to do one without the other, I feel it's a problem because in the mm. end, we are all mixed into this. And if I have an inheritance, so like me as a Moor, right? If I can, based on my queen, claim certain things, let's say from Spain, right? And then I see mm -hmm. in the records that these Moors also had a situation going on in Lenape territory. It behooves me to put you on, even though you're not even, you know what I'm saying, directly involved, because mm -hmm. that's part of your people money too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm saying so. It as as a, as it is so called indigenous being, it would behoove me to say, "Hey, brother, we got this thing popping with these people, and we would like to get you as a consignatory on it. So when the bread comes through, this now extends what we all could get." <laughs> See now what these people owe. You know what I'm saying? Now what you saying? Now what you saying is is like that's right and exact, and that's all I ever said to people. Like I'm like people think that. The tribes don't want to work with the Moors. Now nah, we going we'll work with anybody, but you, we gotta understand, like, and I don't mean to be like yo, it's a hierarchy to this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like before Illinois existed, there was the Treaty of Chicago. You know what I'm saying? So right. before that, before that, right. before that charter could be drawn up by the state of Illinois, that treaty had to be signed. That's mm -hmm. right. And there's 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 tribal names on those treaties. That's right. You know what I'm saying? So so when you start coming in the name of things, you got to understand this. Like you always got a grandmother, B. I don't care how old you are. You that's always right, got man. a grandfather. And you that's can't right. never cut them off. That's right, and once bro. you do that, that's what that's what makes us not unified. Because I got family members who you have to go back five generations to see where we're related. Yep. But to this day, they'd be like, nah, we're not related. I'd be like, I got the genealogy. Because I got <laughs> my genealogy. I got my shit going back to the 1600s. Islam. You know what I'm saying? Like... I know who all my family is in New Jersey, New York, Islam. and all the surrounding areas. You know what I'm saying? And that's so, the work, though, Mo. That's the work that's that the, that's a lot of our people. But see, we came from a situation where we didn't have an internet. We had to steal books. We had to, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Like, we had to literally, like, wrestle information from people that was gatekeepers based on their little mm -hmm. hopes or whatever. You dig what I'm saying? And then offer things and have to deny that in order to stay true enough to just one day walk down the street and just see a whole pile of books and it just so happened to be the same shit that i was that i needed you dig what i'm saying mm -hmm. but yeah. what i'm saying is that there's certain things like you said there was these are the five dollars the five dollar indians is the same conversos and these ones that mm -hmm. converted and did whatever they had to do to stay to, to survive at. and then mm -hmm. when it all got flipped on them they finally became some of them decide to become Portuguese Jews and then they sell them into slavery and bring them over here. Then they bring all of us that's noble here and send them over there. So in that, mm -hmm. we both are the only people as melanated Moors, both indigenous and let's say foreign, that have this happen to us. And the whole mm -hmm. 527 years since this has happened has now birthed us. When I say us, I mean the universal us to be able now to get past the ego aspect of it. I don't want to be under no other Moors jurisdiction neither. How about that? And I'm a Moor. But at the same okay. time, I don't want to be under anybody's jurisdiction. jurisdiction. Other than you want to be under your own under jurisdiction. High, other than the higher self, which again, I mm -hmm. refer to as Allah or whatever. But on earth, I want to be in unit with people where if something happened with my nation and my government, I have the ability to look to my side, my right and my left and say, even though this more may not wear fez and even though this more may not do this, we're all unified because we know that it's us against everybody else. It's and like this. To that, oh, we, to be good. That, that's the purpose yeah. of Moorish nationality. That's it. I don't want to. I don't. Mm -hmm. I, what I see it as is that a lot of the so-called indigenous governments, like like, I don't want to speak for yours, but just people who are dealing with this aspect of it, the real definition aspect of it, where you can actually prove and have done things to establish. What a lot of, did like you said, is different sects of Moors. So some mm -hmm. Moors expect all other groups that are not, let's say, officially declared, let's say, Moors, to then, let's say, adopt how they view it, the understanding of what being a Moor is. Meaning that 
their understanding of it is strictly based on what our prophet left us, which is dope. But he never said, don't read and don't expand on this. He mm -hmm. said, imitate me. So if he established a kingdom, an empire and dominion, just the way that we did based on what happened with the Pharaoh and all of that, with the rise of the Hebrews, we have the same thing to do it today. And I don't have the right to impose the MST of A's, let's say, if I was rep representing that yeah. cheek from that to then say, because I'm doing a, a, a treaty with you guys, you guys have to abide by the rules of our nation. And I don't think because they don't understand international diplomacy and how to actually de-escalate situations, they are always on the defensive. I, I, the work that I've seen you do, to me, as, as an observer and as a more, is, is more offensive. Meaning that you're not coming from a perspective of a defensive position because you're securing you. Like I could tell people whose position, they're secure in the position that they're making because they're saying what they're saying about what they're saying and it's not based on trying to make somebody else look a certain way. So based upon mm. the information that I've seen, it's thus been on point in the in the offensive nature, meaning that it's basically this is what it is. This is the actual definition and this is how it is. When people who don't go through that sort of acumen are presented with that, their only reference to really bring that into balance is either what somebody told them, what's on mm -hmm. the Internet or uh, the one book that they got on this whole Situation. Mm -hmm. On the subject, yeah. yeah. So Absolutely. again, as it says, we must forgive them for they do not what they do. You know what I'm saying? They're still mm -hmm. wrapped up in the malign aspect of this, and they're not understanding that the goal of it is to reestablish ourselves as people, a, a people. And if you have a base now that you are speaking from, or I have a base that I'm speaking from that's outside the internet, that's in the real world, grounded in real action. That is a threat mm -hmm. because we don't need the internet to do this. You understand what I'm Absolutely. saying? Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. being done. So uh, I don't want to be too long, brothers. I got to get ready uh, I'm at the airport. I'm about to take this flight. So okay. uh, I definitely want to say peace to you. Sorry, I have to cut it short. Sorry. Hold on a second. That's no problem. It's long. All right. But again, thank you for having me on, Brother Sharif. Uh, thank you again, Brother turtle gang please give my uh give the brother my uh email or phone number whatever and then inshallah you could definitely build man and this is a lot of work i see it has to be done so i appreciate Indeed. what you've been doing Indeed, yeah. brother well going to walk in islam 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 all right islam peace sharif i'm gonna holler at you tomorrow all right thanks for coming on islam islam to all the more human families and planet earth all the monsters, right. peace. Peace. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, man. So yeah, I think I'm, I think that went well. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad we were able to build, you know, and and um keep it positive and and get some real information out, you know, because the main thing is like like I was saying before. I mean, I mean, I'm guilty of it myself of sharing memes and things that we see online, and it's like you know you can't even get a source on it. You know, and people are spreading it. They're not doing any work or research. And then, like you said, with people not even understanding their own, you know, family background or understanding where they're coming from. So, you know, it's it's a lot to it. Um, it's definitely no need for any division. I mean, it's time for us to come together. That's the order of the day. That's where everybody's feeling, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, I, I I can't even understand why anybody would be in here on some, you know, division trying to break things up. So. I mean, you know, it, yeah, we, you know we, we have a we have a common we have a common oppressor. You know, what I mean, we have come. We have too many things in common to be fighting amongst each other. You know, what I mean, all the oppressed people of the world. And, and you know. That's what the, the unity has to lie within what's right and what's wrong. You know, what I mean, regardless of, of what we call ourselves, what our history is, you know, we got to start dealing with what's right and what's wrong as, as a as a as nations and as people and start treating each other with respect nation to nation individual to individual husband to wife you know what i mean so you know i mean we we, we doing the work you know what i mean we, we doing the work yo i feel like today was a good um what was a good dialogue you know what i mean very respectful and um 
No, I'm definitely uh appreciate the build. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Yeah, so yeah, the feedback in that's the room in the same thing, man. It was a good build, a golden, you know, a golden build. So um I appreciate it and yeah, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming on and thanks for sharing the knowledge, putting out the films, man. We all appreciate it, man. Much respect. Yes, sir. Let's let, let's do this again, you know what I mean? Definitely, man. All right. All right. All right. All right, cool. All right, All right so Please, on that Manish. note, we're going to go ahead and end things, man. Make sure y'all share it. Hit the share button if you enjoyed this, and uh, hit the like share button. And um, that's it, man. Y'all tune in. We'll do something else. We'll run it back. All right, peace. Peace. Peace.